Welcome to the channel, and welcome, hopefully, to what I believe will be the start of a long but hopefully interesting experiment in powder-coated cast lead hollow point bullets in different alloys and hardnesses, and different velocities, and different designs. Let me give you a bit of background why I'm starting this experiment. Um, I've spent a lot of time reading forums and uh, articles on the internet, and I've, I've come across uh, various uh, mysteries, if you will, that seemingly can't be truly known. Uh, everyone seems to have a theory or an opinion, but very few people seem to have any first-hand experience. And a couple of these theories, these mysteries, seem to deal with a lot of speculation concerning hollow point bullet expansion. Um, whether it's the different brands, different designs, different velocities. Some people have some very strong opinions, but often can't point to any sort of evidence. Also, to a lesser degree, there seems to be similar discussions of different cast lead bullets, um, the way they expand based on their design, uh, the velocity that they're shot at, and the alloy and the hardness that they're made of. Recently, I ordered and received two different hollow point molds. As you can see here, I've got a mold for 44 and I've got a mold for 38 and 357. This mold is made from the Lee 358-158RF mold. It's a two bullet mold with one single hollow point design. This is one of my favorite bullets for the 38 and 357. As you can see here, I have the same mold as a six bullet mold, um, not hollow pointed, and I, I wanted the same bullet hollow pointed. I also recently acquired this 44 hollow point mold. This particular mold came with four different styles of pins, and I have one of each in here currently. There's a flat nose bullet. Let me get this in camera. There's a flat nose bullet, a small hollow point, a large hollow point, and an even larger hollow point that the, uh, the maker calls a penta. It's a five-sided uh, pin. The 44 is the Keith Semi Wad Cutter design. As you can see here, I have examples of each of those bullets uh, powder coated. That's the 38 bullet. There's the Penta and the large hollow point from the 44. There's the small hollow point and the solid bullet from, from the 44. So as I pondered my various use cases for these hollow points, I began to wonder about which design would best fit a particular application, what alloy would give the best performance. As these questions started to come to mind, I, I started to do some research, and I came across an article uh, from the May 1953 issue of the American Rifleman. I've got a printout of that article here. The article was written by John Zlachik, and I apologize, I have no idea if that's how his name is pronounced. Um, but the title certainly interests me, Expanding Bullets for the 44. This was showing a lot of promise, and then as I read the tagline, it said, What takes place when hollow points are fired in the 44 at various velocity levels? What are the effects of varying bullet hardnesses on these velocities? That's exactly what I wanted to know. 
he goes on to pose a couple questions here at the beginning of the front, uh, first page. He says, the tests reported here and the results of the firings recorded in the tables on these pages are for the 44 shooter who has fruitlessly searched existing arms literature for some faint glimmer of light on commonly asked questions. Just exactly what will these hollow point bullets do? Will they actually expand? Does hollow pointing a bullet increase its deadliness? Do these bullets penetrate much after they expand? More experienced shooters, some of whom might want to reload for magnum performance themselves, will want to know how fast does a revolver bullet have to be driven before it will expand? I have a mold and am ready to cast, but how hard or soft should hollow point bullets be alloyed to open up properly? What difference is there, if any, between the different shapes of hollow point bullets now on the market? Does one bullet construction expand different uh, from others? He goes on to test in this article four bullet designs. Tests each in four different alloys and at four different uh, velocities. He records the penetration, the expansion, the damage in the target that he uses in bales of soaking wet newspapers. He records all those results and, uh, and tabulates them in, in tables that are included in the article. And comes to various conclusions. The final two sentences I thought were very interesting. Let me read these to you. Where the revolver is to be used for protection only, there's little difference what metal the bullet is cast of. Because of the few feet range at which most defensive firing is likely to occur, all bullets fairly rip themselves and things to pieces. Only the hunter who will take shots at long ranges is concerned with bullet metals. For the velocity drop over given distances materially lessens the bullet's chance of opening up properly, and soft metal must be relied upon to make up for the loss in impact, speed, and energy. This article was very enlightening for me, but it doesn't fully satisfy my curiosity. In order to satisfy my curiosity, I believe I need to run my own tests to perform my own experiments. There are a few differences between what I want to do and what uh, this gentleman did in this article. I want to experiment with powder-coated bullets. I want to experiment with clear ballistics gel. And I want to experiment with my hollow points.